Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast, and uh, still here in Michigan, we are at the um, mercy. Is that the right word? I don't know what the right word is. I'm looking for. We're we are appreciating Joe for letting us crash his office here today. Um, in the journey, sometimes you find uh, a lot of people as you're going out and getting the interviews. And met Jeff here, and Jeff, I'll let you introduce yourself. But it kind of worked out that you could come down here, meet Joe, and then wouldn't you know it, you guys bought a trailer from him five years ago or from his dad. So it's kind of funny how it's a small world. But thank you, Joe, for letting us uh, take the office today. Jeff, you want to introduce yourself uh, to the audience just a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, my name is Jeff Hebner, uh, Central Michigan shed hauler, mainly out of Beaverton, Midland area. I haul from anywhere lower Michigan to upper Michigan. So a little bit of everywhere. So it's kind of, it, yeah, in Michigan. So it's kind of, do you get up to the UP any year? Five, six times a year. Yeah, a little bit. Um, we're going up this weekend and going to try to spend some time up there and we can't wait. Uh, no, it's, everybody says it's a beautiful country. So we want to, we want to see some of that and experience some of that. But um, yeah, so we're here at, at, at Bond Trigger Construction BC Barnes and, we're doing our coffee time that they're talking about on their episode, uh, 10 o'clock and you, and you come in and when you know it, Henry's here and he said, you know what? I think I bought a trailer from you five years ago when I was getting started. And, uh, it's interesting how it kind of worked out. So you bought like, a it was an older roller type trailer, uh, with the farm jack for the lifting. And it did the trick on the smaller eight by 10, 10 by 12s broke you right into Shed hauling, uh, shed hauling 101 right there, right? It was, it was, it was a good beginning. You still got that? I do. Yeah. And do you use it or? Not to haul sheds lately. Okay. Other equipment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a backup. Sure. So, um, tell me a little bit about your shed story. Like how'd you get into, would you identify yourself as a shed hauler? Would you identify yourself as uh, sales? What 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 sort of has been your experience? You've been in this about five years, you told me, but what's kind of your introduction to the industry and what what brought you into it? Um, mainly a shed hauler. I uh, work with the Amish mainly. Um, I do personal moves, but um, someone gave me a shed years ago and I had a boat trailer, so I went and moved it. And it all started from there. So they gave you a shed and you're like, got to figure out a way to do this and you're a pretty mechanical guy so you're like i'm gonna i'll jump in figure it out maybe i can do this for a living it it took a whole day to get an 8 by 12 shed home uh there was a little bit of a pond in between we were able to navigate that it was 100 yards back and a little bit of jack and this and blocks and ropes and straps and sweat and we got her so now you're previous history was in you were a military guy yes sir so you came out of the air force um and worked in uh, sort of a mechanical field worked in the heating and air conditioning boilers uh we fixed everything people broke uh, <laughs> we we did it all so that kind of prepared you in some way to say yeah this looks like something i could do you move that first one, and then what did it look like from there? You're like, hey, I've got to find out more about what equipment's available. I'm assuming you moved on to, like, updated or newer equipment since then? Yeah, I updated newer equipment to a mobile home trailer with three axles, bought some old farm jacks, and then three years ago I purchased a, a Ram 4500 trailer and a mule from a gentleman in Clare, Michigan. So he was getting out and you're getting in and you're like, Hey, I want to, I want to see what it's all about. What's been that experience? Oh, it's been busy way, <laughs> way more time working and meeting more people selling way more sheds than I'd ever planned. So Deliver, you, delivering, not necessarily selling. I'm a delivery guy. Gotcha. Yeah. So you, and you're able to move and help those with the Amish communities. You know, there's a large population of Amish and, uh, you know, north of where we are here. Um, was that an experience that you had had before or like growing up here or how did that work? No, the Amish, they were there, but you really didn't talk to them or see them. But now I'm, 
just just friends with them. It's I work with them. And they holler at me, "Hey, Jeff, move shed." So I give them a call. Is your current sales and inventory management system complicated and frustrating? Are you tired of juggling multiple systems to keep track of your business? Those challenges are a thing of the past with a dealer management system powered by RTO National. With the DMS, you can easily process any type of sale with just a few clicks. Leave messy paperwork in the past and welcome in streamlined processes. The intuitive e-commerce links allows customers to browse and shop your inventory anytime, anywhere. Track transportation, payments, and contracts efficiently using our unparalleled service request management and transportation tracking tools. Detailed reporting within the system allows you to track every sale and payment, helping you make data-backed decisions to grow your business. Revolutionize your current workflow with the dealer management system. Explore the user-friendly interface and experience the DMS firsthand by scanning the QR code or emailing us at contactus at rtonational.com to request a demo. So are you, what do you want to do? What's your hope hope for the future? Are you wanting to sort of expand? It, you talked about kind of being pretty busy now. No, um, I'm not, not really looking to expand. Just I'm staying busy. And since I'm retired military, I don't want to work seven days a week. And I don't have to. It's just I'm trying to, if someone calls says, hey, I need a shed moved. I said, sure, I can do it. What do you feel like will be the, the future for shed hauling. Do you get on things like the shed hauler Facebook page to learn from that? What are the kind of things that you see that you feel like help you be successful? And sure. I, I, I follow that quite a bit and look at the equipment they're using, looking for some that's possibly for sale, a uh, 50 footer to haul used buildings that I could possibly buy. Uh, but there's a lot of information on the marketplace shed haulers. Are you um, pretty active in the, like, like on the page or is it just sort of a good resource for you? Good resource. I don't I don't put my thoughts in there too much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious what your thoughts would be now. <laughs> well, there's there's some when a shed falls off a trailer, it's like, what happened? How did that happen? Or but you know, everybody has a mule and it falls over once in a while. You just don't want to do it more than once. Yeah. It's happened to everybody and you don't want to lose your remote too often. It happens once. So you're yeah, which has happened, right? Yes. Uh, if I understand it right. Um, yeah. What What's sort of been your your thoughts on the industry five years now post-military? I find it kind of interesting because, like, we talked about, like, it took me back to, like, Colin Dexter and his time in the Air Force and I think Joe Scarpetta. Like, these guys are in um let's see joe did army i always find it interesting because i was like in the military as well so when i find similar military people or personalities that come out of the uh service and then somehow end up in the industry and those guys are working in sort of a tech field he said hey i'm going a different route i i kind of want to focus on sheds and shed hauling and it just kind of came about in a way that you weren't looking for it but still uh always kind of our conversations have kind of reminded me of mine and yours with Colin. Uh, you have a very interesting story. Matter of fact, one area that you and uh, me and Deanna were sitting and talking with you about was that you experienced cancer in your lifetime and had to kind of overcome that. Uh, how's that been? Well, it's when you get cancer, it's scary and, but you just keep living and everything's been positive and, Everything's in remission now again, and you just move on. Does that affect you at all in your work? No, not right now. I'm working 10, 12 hours a day. It's pretty much Monday through Sunday. And now do you move You move a lot of sheds? Do you, you know, how, how does it work for you? How do you schedule out your week? I don't really have a schedule. I um, If someone calls today and they need one moved immediately, I, I own my equipment so I can change. I can move a schedule um, I've got one in West Branch I'm supposed to move, and maybe tomorrow if, if I get the permit. It's it's a flexible. People say, what time are you going to do it? And I says, I can't tell you what time, or I try to give you a day, but the time of the day, because one shed, the first one might take four hours. You just don't know, because if it's a used shed, it just it's not like moving a new shed from a lot to a, a lot. So tell me about your process. You have a, a, an interesting process of moving your sheds or staging your sheds 
what's it look like and how's it different from maybe what you see on say the haulers page or different events that, that you go to that people talk about hauling sheds do you feel like what you do is unique different uh what's your setup look like i guess my mine i i move tough sheds which are difficult to move i'll move anything if someone wants it moved um i'll give them a number and if they like it i'll do it i i like a challenge you know if it's a taller building i don't have an issue with it now you've got uh, a way that you stage them though uh that's got a, a jack on each side is that right Oh, when I first started, I've got two far, two old semi jacks. This is before I got the nice setup I have with hydraulic trailer and all. But I could move a twenty ten a twelve by twenty shed and put two jacks at the very center on each side, jack it up, slide my trailer under, and move it. But the only disadvantage there you had to be able to unload it where the trailer could get to. But that was a learning. I learned a lot. I was pretty much a MacGyver on that. Uh, well, as is a lot of shed haulers, right? They're, they're all that way. You've got to learn it or it isn't going to work. Yeah. Most of what I admire in, in the shed hauling side of the industry is that they're just hardworking, busy, and they have a can do figure it out kind of attitude in most cases. Yeah. There's not a, I can't do it. It's, I can do it. Yeah. Figure out how, uh, now you've upgraded and looking to upgrade more, you're looking, you were telling me you're looking for like a 50 foot trailer. An older used one. I want just, so if I find a used shed to buy, I'll buy it and then I can refurb it and resell it and deliver. Yeah. Right now I can haul up to 40 foot. And sheds are getting bigger. Oh my gosh, they are. Is it, is it that much harder to move one, uh, 40 foot and compared to what you're normally doing right now, 40 foot plus? A 36 foot is easy to move, easier than a 20 foot. You can load it on a trailer, back up, load it. It's amazing how much easier the bigger buildings are to, to load than a small 8 by 10. They just, they'll go right on your trailer without thinking. So what's, what's been like your biggest hurdle, your biggest surprise getting into this? The police officers, they like to pull you over. <laughs> They'll pull you over. I've I've went thirty years without getting pulled over, and in the last five years, I've been pulled over forty or fifty times. Goodness, they just you're just a big old red dot out there for them. You think the the DOT here in Michigan specifically just uh, uh, eyeball or have a tendency to see those sheds coming down the road? They're like, hey, not necessarily DOT. The state troopers. Uh. Um, they, they'll just pull you over. I was driving from near Midland, and one week I was halt going down the road on US 10, and the trooper pulled me over. Two weeks later, same trooper, same spot. I said, hey, sir. <laughs> he said, I'm just checking. <laughs> just checking. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Um, what do you, like, what do you... What do you do in those situations? I mean, uh, me and you talk a lot about permitting and things like that and like, you know, what the different rules and, and things, uh, there's so many rules. You don't think about it when you start. I started just cold Turkey. Nobody taught me. I taught myself. Yeah. I'd watch and look and every time, let's say the waymaster pulls you over, he's, he's been great. He's pulled me over a few times and he'll sit and, explain, Hey, this is what you'd really need to be doing. Or I'm 95% up there. I've, I'm learning, but there's always more as everybody knows. Shedhub.com is the shed industry's very first two-sided marketplace that allows you, the shed seller, to list your inventory on a site specifically designed for selling sheds. Shedhub establishes more qualified sales leads and helps your customers find you with a simple online search. Shoppers searching where to buy sheds and sheds near me have grown by 200% in the last two years. This means even if the buyer wants to visit a sales lot to purchase a shed, their shed buying journey started with a simple Google search. They can actually check out and purchase the shed straight from Shedhub if they prefer to shop online. Shedhub does not charge any commission for sheds you sell. We simply charge the monthly subscription. Your sales commission is still yours to keep. Sheds listed on Shed Hub will have first page search results 
in 91% of cities or where to buy sheds is searched. For special pricing, only available through ShedGeek. Simply go to geek.shedhub.com to see the promo codes that allow you to save as much as 50% off the first 12 months of your subscription and over 75% for companies with multiple sales locations. Sell more sheds using shedhub.com. You're here in Michigan, but you also have, because of your military roots, you kind of have like a, um, places in Texas or, or Florida or something like that. Um, have you talked to the guys in like those areas about like what shed hauling looks like in that area or you just plan on staying in Michigan and maybe, you know, focusing on here? I'm, I'm just mainly in Michigan in the summer. Uh, the Texas, I know they've, they're busy hauling all the time I've seen and Florida the same way. There's a lot of shed haulers down there I've seen and communicated with some of them. Yeah. It's busy. Yeah. I think Michigan's probably a little slower than down South right now with sales. Yeah. I would think maybe it seems to be that way. Just, um, weather wise, uh, you know, even how people are building, if they're building year round, obviously the one benefit to the South is the nicer weather. You're able to work in it all year, but man, it's, it's hot. Oh yeah. <laughs> Texas. I feel so sorry for you. I think it's one Oh two this week in, <laughs> in Illinois in Southern Illinois where I'm from. And uh, it's maybe 70 up here today or 75 or something like that. But Texas just, pounded with that 105 109 it's got to be a lot to work in um where do you see like the the shed hauling side of the industry going forward obviously we see a lot of things like the the midwest barbecues coming up texas you know oklahoma uh montezuma georgia i think the um the national bash is coming up in north carolina in march that's got me a little bit worried now we're gonna i'm gonna be a grandpa in march so I'm kind of if you're going to make it. Yeah. I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to get out there. We'll see, but I'm going to try to make that one. I haven't made any yet. I've, I've always been busy. And it's like, well, how do these guys get out there and take Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off when you get work, but you just have to schedule it. I yeah. haven't been good with that one. That's it. I think, you know, a lot of those guys try to make it to the national ones, but you know, even the local ones, you know, they just try to attend. Have you, partnered with and partnered's the wrong word have you associated with other shed haulers sort of in the area or in michigan to acquire more work or to kind of build a relationship to help out the one thing the haulers are really good about jeff is they're you know they're, they're big on building community and uh, helping each other in, in a need no the mainly I've, I've worked in blanchard i've helped a couple of the shed builders there up in claire i've I'll move pavilions for them, uh, but it's, we've been so busy, you know, to sit and say, I'm talking with this shed mover. Well, last night as I was coming home, two of the evergreen guys flew by me and we did our light honking and stuff. And that's about the time we've had. <laughs> yeah. I, well, this was, this was kind of cool. Cause for you to be able to come in and uh, Joe be here and right. Henry, and just, you know, just to be able to sit and talk about experiences and things you've done. And they um, kind of talked about their stories and getting started. And um, have you had any interesting deliveries over these this period of five years that you've been hauling? Oh, there's plenty. There's some you don't even want to talk about. Uh, there was one I said, okay, is it a finished shed? And they said, no, it's not finished. And I get there and it's all drywalled, insulated. It doesn't have walls. So I guess it had to have extra walls to be finished. Well, I moved it, got it to the property. And the problem was I said, no, this is a super heavy shed and it's got two by four runners or joist. And I said, it's a weak building for as heavy as it is. And once I started getting down on an angle of the house, the one end came apart and then the other end came apart and it was, it was not pretty. I felt terrible. Yeah. What do you do in a situation like that? Especially whenever you're new to the industry, do you have waivers that you ask people to, you know, sign? Would it be nice if those things did exist, you know, or do they already? And you can tap into the resources that exist as a new shed hauler. I know they've got like the shed hauler brotherhood and the, you know, 
Uh, of course, the shed hauler bash that's, you know, do you find those things advantageous? And even where most communication gets out, it seems like on the page or the website, Facebook page for shed haulers or the website, seems like those things would be helpful for a new hauler. On the shed haulers uh, page, they do have where you've gotten the waivers. I've never had to worry about it. There's like that one. I'm going, okay, I'm not going to get paid on this. And they actually paid me more than I asked, which, what do you do? Um, I'm up front with that one. I said, this one is way too heavy. It's it's could be damaged. Um, luckily, I was able to get it in position where they want it. They can fix the issues that happen, but it's, that doesn't only, it's only happened twice in my five years. The other one was where we were moving a, a shed and it was in sand and I couldn't get traction. Well, this guy had his excavator on the other end of the building. His excavator demolished the end of the building. And the good thing, the guy who was giving it to was able to refurbish it and save it. So, uh, but it wasn't, when you can't see the excavator end on the other end and it, it just didn't work either. Yeah. What is your 30,000 foot view of the shed industry after five years? Like, what do you, what do you kind of, from the top down looking at it from uh, a hauler perspective, do you see an increased opportunity for the shed industry to move forward? Do you get most of your business through, you know, uh, private moves or company moves? I'm probably 50, 50 private moves. Um, I work with this couple of Amish families. They build sheds, so if they go in and get an order, I'll deliver most of them for them. It's it's getting tougher out there, though. There's less money out. The economy's not doing well, and you know, luckily my equipment's all paid off. I don't have bills, so I don't have to work if I don't want to. So it's and I don't expect to be getting any big bills against me either. So just take it day by day. You, you, you've updated your equipment. You said that you've moved into newer equipment currently. Yes. Uh, what do you use for, for hauling? You use a mule? i got a mule 5 HD, uh, 2013 Ram 4500, and a 26 to 40 trailer. And those, for now, those seem to do the job? They do, except when you're heading up to the UP with a 36-footer. Yeah. Kind of almost like you're in a boat. With my truck, I have bought a an older semi with a flatbed that I may use it to haul stuff to the bigger distances that it won't even know the shed's behind me. Um, you go across the Mackinac Bridge, I guess, from time to time with some of those? I do. Yeah. Uh, I see the pictures. It's, it's pretty neat. I went up there a couple weeks ago, and they say you got to be there. It's either 7 at night or 6, 7 in the morning, and I got there right at 6.30, and... I called in. They said, I said, do I have time for a drink or something and soda? They said, no, we're crossing soon. So as I pull on the bridge where they were waiting, there was 10 people in front. And the, the uh, escort guy says, go ahead. So one guy in front of me, I cut in front of everybody, which they probably got all teed off. But <laughs> we all got across quicker than ever expected and made it to my drop within 40 minutes of that. It was, but the bridge personnel are great to work with. Yeah. So we're going to be taking a uh, an RV across it. Anything I need to prepare for? They won't let you take an RV over 25 mile an hour winds, but you are you should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, we want to go up and see the island. I definitely want to cross the bridge. After seeing so many pictures come out of there, sheds going across it, it just kind of uh, seems recognizable and relatable and definitely want to experience some of the UP because it just uh, everybody talks about how beautiful the then right in the left lane where the gro- the grooves are, the gro- where you hear the yeah, <laughs> that's always cool. My dad hated that, but I like it. And oh. you, you can look straight down and see the water below you. Yeah, how long is the bridge? Five miles. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, it's beautiful country. It always is whenever I'm up here, so that's cool. Have you ever had a customer ask you about how to supply power to their shed? Do you sell electrical kits as an upsell for your sheds currently? Do you want an easy, no hassle option? 
to offer for your customers when they want to add electric to their sheds? Check out Echo Ethics Solar. Echo Ethics Solar is looking for shed manufacturers and shed dealers who want to be able to provide a solar electric option to their line of sheds. With Echo Ethics Solar, you can purchase the SunSaver, a solar product specifically designed with the shed owner in mind. Want to offer a larger product that can operate a full tiny home? At Echo Ethics Solar, they have the necessary product, training, and capacity to meet your customers' needs. Installation for the SunSaver is simple and takes just 45 minutes. You can even install it right there in your sales lot or at the manufacturing facility. Echo Ethics Solar even provides hands-on in-person training if necessary. Plus, they will provide you with video tutorials and handouts with specific installation instructions that keeps adding a solar-powered electrical system to your shed fast and simple. In many cases, the end user can even perform the installation once the shed is delivered to their home. If you are interested in purchasing a unit for display and then drop shipping your orders or even ordering multiple units to have available as you build, contact my friends at Echo Ethics Solar at 336-250-1284 or email sales at echoethicsolar.com. So what do you... Uh... What's your thoughts on your overarching thoughts on the shed industry, man, at this point? Five years in, um, obviously, you've you've expanded. It's kind of, you know, surprising to see things like a, a podcast, right? You know, oh, about, absolutely. The, about the industry, but it kind of gives you a little bit of accountability or an understanding, not accountability, but understanding of how big the industry is. Has that surprised you? It's amazing because with the RTOs, with all the different shed lots everywhere, the size of sheds, 50 footer. I know in Texas, I saw, I think, a 60 foot shed, mini home, or whatever you call it. There, they're getting large. Yeah. I, I don't need the 60s or, but it's, it's quite a, quite an outfit out there for everybody. You just, uh, you're content with hanging out working on your own schedule right and just kind of being in control of your own and that's the advantage that i have i can if i've got something scheduled today and someone comes up and has an emergency i'm able to switch and change and try to be flexible yeah shed hauling can be dangerous uh you also have to be very careful have you ran into any situations where you're like wow there's areas for potential improvement safety uh, just close calls, things that, you know, have concerned you or had led to, you know, potentially getting hurt or being hurt? Uh, a couple of things. On the farm jack, I use mine a lot. It's doesn't matter how safe you are. Sooner or later, you're going to get a nick or a smack. And it did get hit, hit my eye one time. And I've since backed off. I try not to let anybody, if they're just there helping to touch the farm jacks, because they're, they're dangerous. And then with all the construction in Michigan right now, once you have an annual permit, you don't necessarily get on and look for the roads that are all, if they're eight or 10 foot wide. Well, I had a 10 foot wide. I went, I don't know if it was down by Charlotte, but their cones, I was inches on each side. And I know after I went through it, I would have gotten in trouble if the DOT or the state troopers or, but I didn't knock any cones over. So I did well. Yeah, I saw a um, Facebook post the other day, a meme that said areas in blue are areas free of road construction in Michigan. So it was, of course, all the lakes around. <laughs> uh, we've kind of experienced it and us being up here driving through it so far. But um, otherwise, the state's just gorgeous. It's beautiful, oh, yeah. you know. Um, and I guess you're going to have that with all the salt on the road and the traffic on the road you're just going to have a lot of transportation can be tricky i would imagine for a shed hauler um expense i mean insurance all these different things are things you have to consider when you're getting into it uh has that surprised you any it is insurance my first year was the lowest quote was 14 grand for the truck and trailer and uh i was able to look around and I end up getting it for 11000 but you had to pay the whole thing down, which is normally you don't have that much money laying around, but I, I, I found it. And just trying to drive safe, and mm -hmm. but the expenses are always there. You don't know if it's a wheel bearing or a steering column, which I've got to change out here soon. And since I can do most of the maintenance, I do most of the work. Do you, you maintenance your own trucks and equipment now? I do. Have you had to get into like the mule or anything like that? And 
there's little things, nothing major. Uh, some of the electronic controls I've since bought. A, I've had the Amish build a mule cover where you can flip it up, rain don't get on it. Because otherwise, that's what's happened a lot of times on your controls and nozzles where water gets in and touches an electrical control and it starts acting up. So I try to put the cover on every day. Very interesting, man. You got a cool story and it seems like that you're, you want to do more, going to do more, um, slowing down anytime soon. Not in the future. I'm still going at it. Feel good. It's a challenge. Sometimes I enjoy most of it. Yeah. Have you listened to the podcast in the past? I've listened to some. Has, has any of it been beneficial to you in any way? That's a dangerous question oh, yeah, to ask you, live. You know, a lot of per- people you talk, they, you learn what they did and how they do it and different ways to get around things. Um, the one earlier was uh, on Google on getting your name on the internet more because if people, the first thing they do is go to Google. Yeah. And if you're able to have your name there, people can call you because that's the first thing you do. Go to Google. Yeah. Well, and it may work out that... You know, who knows? Maybe that's something we can help you on in the future for, you know, personal hauls or something like that. If some, if that's something you're wanting to do more is, is uh, get more eyeballs on what you do. Absolutely. And then they can at least call you and you can go from there. How do you, how do you go about a quote uh, with folks over the phone? It's pretty much a set low price of, you know, you have a one price and then if it's distance or if there's runners on it. Yeah. You know, if, if you just give a quick quote, once you get somewhere where there's no runners, it's in the dirt six inches, it's in two track back a mile, it, you just need to ask more questions generally. Otherwise, you just got to stick with what your quote was, and at the end, they all wash out. It's Have you had some big surprises, I, I gather? Oh, from- yeah, I've had a couple moving... They said, oh, yeah, we're just going to take it back here in a little ways. And, well, it was a mile back, a two-track. And and when we get there, they had a sand pile. They said, well, should we put it on blocks? And I says, normally you should do something. And, well, I'm looking around, and there's no blocks. He says, oh, we got them all around. I said, well, normally you'd have them right here in the pile. So we would, two and a half hours later, we get done, and it's blocked. And I says, well, she said, uh, are you mad at us? I said, no. And I said, well, normally the people tell me if, if it's something out of the ordinary, well, you didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, one out of a hundred is back two miles and or one mile back in a two track, and yeah, but you can't ask all that for everybody. It's like yeah. if it's a special set or lay. Most people say, "Hey, I'm on the side of a hill, Jeff," or "I'm I've got this tree in the way." But normally, you just deal with it. It's some shed drops take twenty minutes, and some are two hours. Do you find that the customers are reasonably accommodating? The one thing that I gather from watching, say, like the, the Facebook page that the, the haulers are on, is um, there's some really nice success stories. It's really cool to read some of the stories or overcoming certain things. Uh, recently, just watching in Texas, you know, they were talking about how Texas has more mountains than you think, and they were they were taking that semi and that trailer or that uh, the shed up a very large hill. Uh, and I, I was kind of impressed by seeing those things. So I'm so happy that people share them. Um, but do you, do you, you know, I listened to some of the other stories that are on there and I didn't haul sheds. Um, we owned a truck and trailer for a small time and then realized, Hey, that's not our space to be in, but we had a driver, so it didn't really work out to, for me to haul. Now, one thing me and you got in common was military and I was in transportation. So it's kind of funny cause I, I did haul like flatbed, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it was military was different than, you know, the civilian world and the rules were different, uh, to be able to haul. So I mean, we were hauling mainly military equipment. So I, I find it interesting whenever they talk about like the customer stories about how they got there and either the unreasonableness of the customer or the absolute, like grace of the customer kindness and you know, they tip and all these different things. It's like, what, what's your experience with most customers? Do you find them in all by the mule? Do you find them difficult to deal with? Does it matter if it's a building delivery versus a private move job? I don't have a lot of difficult people. It's, I kind of try to be flexible with them. Um, 
Uh, some are, and I mean, you just deal with what it is. I, I mean, most 90% of my customers are great. They'll, once you're moving with the mule, they'll come out and look and some people get their chairs out and I say, no, that's a $10 fee. If you're going to watch me move with the mule and you're having a drink. So <laughs> 20, if you're offering <laughs> advice, right? Oh, there's a few that help. And I just try to be nice about it. Yeah. It's because once you're in your little routine, you get your meal off and you, you don't have, you don't really want to sit and talk until you get things down the building. You don't, you can't really talk to the clients. I, and some people say, well, you're a little bit off standish. Well, I'm worried about the building. I don't want to break or dent or damage it. So it, you just have to have work with the customers. Managing your rent-to-own contracts just got easier with RTO Smart. Designed by leaders in the rent-to-own storage industry, RTO Smart was handcrafted to enable you with the tools needed to manage your own contracts your way without using a third-party rent-to-own company. RTO Smart is your one-stop shop, allowing you to generate contracts and manage customer accounts from start to finish while maintaining simplicity and flexibility. Call us today at 316-618-9396 or visit our website at rtosmart.com to schedule a live demo and discover why RTO Smart may be right for your business. Where can shed hauling improve uh, in the industry? Is there an area that the industry as a whole could improve where we can increase communication so that shed haulers have a better experience? Uh, what are things you wish you knew five years ago? If someone wrote a book up, that would be great. Hey, there that you would go. Be, that would be, a, you know, you could have 100 chapters on different things, what to expect, what to do how to fix, check your brakes, grease your bearings, just moving a shed, moving two sheds at once, um, uh, placing the sheds, you know, but it's there, there, uh, someone could make some money on a book. Yeah. You think, um, but you know, YouTube, like where, you know, somebody could kind of do like a shed hauling one oh one kind of thing could, could, help out a little bit for like a new person that's trying to get into it. Sure. That would work. Um, I mean, typically it seems like they have someone helping them. Right. Uh, but for the guys that kind of get thrown to the wolves or, or starting up on their own, you know, there's resources that they need to sort of tap into that. Right. Maybe could be helpful. Right. Like, and I didn't do any of that. I just jumped in and started moving one and two and hundreds. And, and I keep learning too. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. You never have the idea that you're you're done learning. It's you're always learning more. What's been your best customer experience for for moving a shed? Is there anything that stands out that was like a just a surprisingly good moment? A lot of them are like recently I've had this year already probably 15 or 20 where they've had the pad just perfect. It's easy drop move and in and out in 30 minutes. But again, they're not all that way, but you just have to, in your mind, know that some are going to take longer. And we've had a lot of great customers and clients. You're up here in Michigan where frost plays a big role in the shed. Um, you know, and we even talked about this with Joe. Do you see a lot of pads or do you see a lot of uh, blocking? I am. Um, we don't do anything like down south. I've never done a four or six block high building. Um, I, I'll i put patio blocks down for them, the six by 12 by two inches. Um, it's kind of what I'll do. I'll do the delivery leveling and putting blocks down if they want. Or they can put gravel and have it pat, stamped down where it's hard. Um, you have a preference? Well, the pads are easy, but <laughs> like I tell them, I said, I'll bring the blocks for 250 each and place them down, and then they have nothing to worry about. They don't have to pay the $800 for a new pad, or and I've never been called back to any of the leveling in my four or five years, so it, the blocks work. If we could, I, I go to a lot of these events with shed haulers. If there's an area 
and topic that we can discuss in detail, in depth, more so. What are areas that you feel like we should, on the podcast here, increase communication in? What are areas that you'd like to hear about, things you'd like to hear about, conversations that would just be helpful or, or entertaining? Um, leveling for me, I'm, I'm pretty good at it, but I've, I've actually purchased, a, oh, what is it called? Uh, laser level. Oh yeah. I just have never used it yet. I've, I know if I was better at it, I'd be better at what I'm doing, but I need to learn on that. Um, safety of hauling sheds. You know, I, I know when I'm the, the Amish guys I work with, they use the three inch sinker nails when they're doing the runners. So I know that the runners are attached to the, the, the joist and um, they're good. Now I've seen on Facebook where there was a shed the other day and somehow the building came off from the runners. I just don't know how that would happen. And the runners were, were strapped down on the trailer. All right. But the building was off. There's always something interesting on the page. To me, that's the resource. It's one of the best places to go to kind of see where things are happen, happening constantly. Um, you know, I would love to have something fully integrated, you know, under, you know, where Shed Geek can kind of increase communication out there, but I won't, I won't step on like anybody's toes of what's already working. Right. You know, but, and they, they do a great job. I mean, the shed haulers are really good about just a sense of community. And if you ever go to, and I think it's, I think it's North Carolina in March. If you ever go to one of those events, you'll really appreciate my opinion. I always tell people, I wish I could put a microphone in front of the table of people who are there at these events. There's 500 people there. They're having conversations that are talking about the different things they do, experiences they've had, but just a sense of community. And I've always said those are the, the best podcast will never be recorded. They'll never be interviewed, unfortunately, because you can only experience that by going to them and being right. around people who do similar things that you do. And I'll, I'll probably attend that one down in, is it South Carolina, North Carolina? I believe it's North Carolina, yeah. But I, I know they'll have information on it on the page and we'll we'll do our our best here to promote as well too but it is interesting uh what you do is interesting uh just getting a chance to meet you while being here in michigan and us being able to touch base and communicate uh me be able to pick your brain and and you be able to pick what little was here to be picked from on mine so um but it seems like you're going to keep doing what you're doing you're you don't mind me asking, you're, you're how old? 58. And no slowdown. And I got that? five, six more good years. My, my bones don't ache, and I'm, I'm in good shape. And this is even after going through, you know, lots of medical, lots of medical setbacks. So, right. you know, I, I admire that, and it, it gives me uh, a sense of, you know, uh, positivity when i look toward the future to say hey man this guy's out here killing it he's 58 years old and he's, he's working hard he don't have to he chooses to no i look at it it's there's people out there saying i don't i can't find work i don't have work it's like from covid on i have not had hardly any time off there's work to do all the time yeah i'm never bored yeah you just got to want to do it and find a way. But again, I, I like, I enjoy doing what I'm doing. And I, during the military, you got to sit and listen to what they tell you to do. Well, I'm, I get to do what I want to do. Yeah. I've had people, I've had a shed where someone said, Oh, you're not doing this. I took the day off because of this. And now you're not coming. And I'm sorry. I, I tried to tell you, I couldn't. I said, I don't ever ask anyone to take a day off. If, if I need to deliver at seven or eight, I'll do that. And then she says, well, keep your shed. And I says, okay, I will. <laughs> well a week later she calls says can i have my shed yeah and i says yes i'll bring it up i still had it yeah and i didn't even charge her extra i was i just left it at that and they were yeah. happy with the shed yeah yeah sometimes uh the customer can have some expectations that are 
bewildering. But, but uh, I, I'd say 90%, 95%, they've all been good customers. Everybody's worked well. And um, sometimes I forget things, and most of them have accepted that if I've dropped the ball on something. Well, man, I sure hope that you have all the resources for you to uh, be successful. If I can be of any assistance or coordinating those efforts and helping you be more successful in anything you do, certainly appreciate you listening to the show and responding to the Facebook message when I'd be in the area. There's so many people that I wanted to see. I'm not even going to get a chance to see while I'm here. Uh, and that's okay because that just means we'll have to come back for round number two. Uh, maybe in a year from now, everybody tells me to come back in the fall to go to the UP. So um, we'll see. Um, but hopefully I can get around, interview some more people. Uh, I encourage everybody to stay tuned. Watch for future uh, potential places where we'll be uh, stopping. I believe everybody has a shed story. And um, I hope today... Uh, today's shed story has blessed you in some way entertained you educated you uh, just found you wherever you are and uh, that you've had a uh, an opportunity to listen in to like-minded people doing similar things it doesn't feel like we're on an island so much whenever you can talk to other people and I, I think that's why the togetherness of the events like the shed expo and the the garage shed carport builder show and the barbecues and you know, even dealer days that I see people having around, it seems like um, most people aren't like super protective of that. There's not really, I can't see that there's really a whole lot to be secretive in the industry. We all kind of do same or similar things, build same or similar sales, same or similar things. Right. You know, so um, building up a sense of community and going back to Tyler Mahan's uh, early words of a rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, we just want to stick with that mentality. Now, two and a half years later, three years will be uh, in March. So by the time I get to be a granddad, um, be doing this for three years and working on a five-year plan. So it's just really cool, Jeff. Uh, this is a lot of fun and getting to meet people like yourself, go out and have lunch while we're in the area and talk about um, what you do and where you're going. Any final words, final thoughts um, for the shed industry or uh, from your perspective? Um, just wanted to tell you, thank you, Shannon. Um, what you're doing is helping a lot. If, if the people actually get out, I've sometimes we forget to pull up shed geek and listen to the podcast, but all the different people that are different ideas and thoughts is really helping a lot of people. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing how many different ideas and what will help. Well, I appreciate it. We try to stay very broad in all things sheds. You know, shed hauling, shed sales, shed, you know, marketing, shed building, shed whatever, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, we try to stay very broad because we know that not every episode is for everyone, but there is an episode out there for uh, everybody. And I think that if they take the time to listen, uh, the industry that we're, we're in, I think kind of lends itself to wanting to learn and talk to other people, iron sharpens iron. So being around other people that like-minded and doing similar things i think they uh i think they appreciate it and i know they do because i have uh, a steady group of guys that are just really good about encouraging me and it, it means so much because you're always easy to be critical jeff you oh, know yeah. is that is that one a hit did that one do right and if i'm being perfectly honest with you there's a couple of times i've gotten away from an episode and said i don't know if that said everything i wanted to say and then I remember it's not about me because that episode goes out and then all of a sudden I get three or four phone calls that say, I love that episode. And I'm like, there you go. It's about the industry. And if we keep it about the industry, I think it'll keep going. So thank you. Thank you for your kind You're words. Welcome. And thank you for being on the show today. And thank you for lunch. I promise when I said I forgot my wallet, that wasn't planned. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> thank, thanks so much. And I uh, wish you... Lots of luck and let me know if we can do anything to help. Thank you. All right.